This video is only for those people that have special needs that require low level access to the silicon. After erasing the RF Duino, you will no longer be able to use the Adreno IDE. Hi, this is Steve for RF Duino. Today we are going to take a look at how to get access to the low level silicon in the RF Duino using the Nordic SDK. To do this, we are going to attach a Sega to the RF Duino, erase it, then manually load the S110 soft device that contains the Bluetooth low energy stack. Then we will use the Keel UVision IDE to load a heart rate monitor simulator and verify it is working by connecting it with an application on the Mac. To get started, we will need the following hardware a SEGA, a SEGA interface shield, a battery shield, an RF Duino, and an RGB shield. In addition, we will need to download and install the following software. Keel UVision version 5, the Nordic SDK, we want version 4.4.1 the soft device we want version 5.2.1 and the NRF Go Studio utility note the silicon soft device and SDK must all be in sync so please use the versions indicated install Keel UVision first using the default installation settings then install the Nordic SDK and NRF Go Studio using the default settings also. Next, attach the hardware and open NRF Go Studio. The RF Duino is protected against accidental erasing, so the first step is to erase everything. There is no going back after this step. Next, we load the S110 soft device and select program. Now our RF Duino is ready to have application code loaded onto it. For demonstration we will load the BLE app HRS app which implements the heart rate service, battery service and device information service profiles defined by the Bluetooth SIG. Navigate to the BLE app HRS ARM directory and click on the UVision project file to open it. First, open all of the folders so we can see the source code. Since the Nordic Evaluation Board and RF Duino don't use the same pin assignments, we need to modify the BLE eval board pins.h header file to use the pins for the RGB shield. We are also going to make the heart rate change value larger so it's easier to observe. The RF Duino uses a high frequency precision crystal as a clock source so we need to indicate that we want the low frequency clock source synthesized from the high frequency clock. We also need to indicate that the RGB shield buttons are active high and disable the internal pull-ups. Now we can build the application. and load it onto the RF Duino. When the application is running, switch 1 and switch 2 on the RGB shield 
are used to wake up the RF Duino and start advertising. The blue LED will start blinking to indicate that it's waiting on a connection. If no connection is received after three minutes, the application stops advertising and goes back to sleep. You may need to wake up the RF Duino to program it again. Now we will use the OSX Core Bluetooth Heart Rate Monitor sample to connect to and test the application. We will connect to the RF Duino, then we will press switch 2 to decrease the heart rate, and switch 1 to increase the heart rate. When we are done, we'll disconnect. I hope this video has been helpful. For more information on the Nordic SDK, I would recommend the Nordic Development Zone website. For support issues, log into the Nordic website and open a support case. Thanks for watching.